What is up YouTube, Kevin Wolford123. Today's video is a overview sort of look at all my systems that I've got modded and on my shelving unit. Um, as you can see I've got puck lights lighting down um, but I don't hear on the PC engine as I like intended to stop about here. I intended to stop here but of course there's two more shelves <laughs> and then uh, I added some more I got the PC engine and then I got the Neo Geo CD and that it just it never ends so I need to get some more ideally um, two more one here one here and then just one in the middle there because with that focuses I'm probably not going to have these games up the top I'm going to have um, shock boxes or soft boxes whatever you want to call them you know across and then across there and hopefully that'll be good so anyway we're going to start with the PC engine this is the Duo R um, the focusing is going to be a nightmare on this. Um, this is RGB modded. It's got like a, uh, I think it's got like a sink cleaner, like low pass filter, um, which is disabled at the moment because I use the OSSC, so I use that and I don't need two because it's going to make it a bit softer. Um, also, I think it's had, yeah, it's had a new laser. That was me that put that in there. It's had a recap as well. Um, but it's got the region free switch also. Got the EverDrive. There's a little region free switch so you can switch it between PC Engine and Turbo Graphics. Um, I got this from Dujin Dance on eBay. Now, normally what I do is I get the system imported and then send it away and get it modded. Uh, the thing is, these systems seem to go for as much as he is charging. This is like under £200 with all the mods. So, the way I saw it was get it if there's any problems send it on for modding because at the end of the day it's cheaper than buying the system and then getting it modded afterwards uh, so I did it that way I have looked inside because I changed the laser myself because it arrived and the laser wouldn't read anything backup wise it would read CD now I know these systems are quite picky anyway so um, I've got a new laser very easy to install put it in it started reading backups but the backups are still a bit iffy um i don't have any actual cd games to test but i really want rondo of blood you know castlevania um so hopefully one day i'll get that um but apart from that it plays everything flawlessly and the image quality is fantastic but yeah no puck light so you can't see it fully lit up or fully lit up litted is that even a word no right anyway so yeah that's the first system then we have uh, as you can see the back's being pushed out here the reason it's being pushed out is because this system is a beast this thing is massive like this is this could eat the mvs and the mvs is quite a large system that could go inside that easily so yeah this is the neo geo cd um i think it was like the cheaper entry point of i got this box to complete uh, t you know, with one control. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna say complete. It's got one controller, but I need to get a second control cheap. Um, this system is uh, like an entry point. If you want the games, um, you know, the games are reasonably cheap. I ain't gonna focus on that. The, if you want the games, are reasonably cheap. Some of them are about like you know 40 50 quid for the good for like the really good stuff some of the stuff's like 10 15 so you can get a good selection the only problem with these systems is they're so slow at loading like they're very slow uh depending on the game if you're playing a game like wind jammers um aka flying power disc that loads into memory once it's loaded you're good to go same as um league bowling the same thing it loads in if you're playing king of fighters you've got you pick three players they pick three players you fight it loads, you fight, you knock one down, it loads, you fight the second one, they knock one down, and then you just keep going. It can take ages between loading. So, um, yeah, anyway, this system here has had uh, a recap on the laser assembly because when it arrived, um, the laser was making a noise like a toy gun. It was like... I was like really worried about it. I thought it was the switch on it where the laser retracts and hits the switch and stops. Um... It ended up being it needed some caps replacing as well as the switch needed fixing. Um, but the seller who I bought this from did um, pay up and pay for the, the actual repairs, which is really good of him. You know, some people will just leave you to it or ask you to send it back. But um, yeah, um, now working perfectly. Uh, has got a UK power supply. Um, well, it's a custom power supply, like a switching one, um, which works with it, which is really good. You get them from like Spain, I think, from Japan... Japan Online or something they're called. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it's just had the recap, re recap, recap on the laser assembly. Uh, everything else is working fine. It's got a switch on the back which you can't see, which you can just reach over and toggle. And that switches between um, USA and Japan. 
So if you're buying Japanese games and you put them in there and it's on Japan, of course it's going to be in Japanese. You switch it to the UK, it's all in you know USA, it's all in USA and English. So you can still play them. It's a really good way of getting games cheaper. Um, so yeah, so I got this uh, and then I kind of got this, the MVS. Um, that tainted this. Um, this doesn't get as much use now. I still use it for a couple of games, but yeah, this is the other system. So this is the MVS um, known as the multi-video system, I think. I'm probably getting that wrong. I'm very new to it. Um, these take big cartridges. These are arcade PCVs that were in the cabs in the arcades in, like, the 90s. And used to get the cartridges, which are the games, slot them in, and away you go. And then you just put your credits in. Now, this is a consoleized unit. It's got a few marks, but that's from 3D printing. That's not, like, scratches. Um, that's just how it came. Um, it's had um, converted to a normal power supply. You have the SCART cable, big heavy duty one. So you've got the SCART for RGB out, which works with the OSSC, this one. Um, it didn't need the battery swapping because it was still good. And it's got like a coin button on the side there, which you don't really need. But um, yeah, it's got the control ports on the front, so you can put the Neo Geo CD control ports uh, controllers in it to play with it, or arcade sticks. And yeah, it works fine. Um, I think as standard, this is the One FZ. Um, they have a bit of trouble with the multi carts, I think. Um, but also, um, I've gone blank now. But yeah, they have a bit of trouble with multi carts. But um, they're they're a nice system. The One FZ is all right because you've got the slot at the front so you can slide it in it looks quite cool i think it's quite nice and i've got this i'll show you this as well ordered this from america um 3d printed and it's got mvs written on it uh there you go and yeah that just slots inside there for when um let me just put it back <laughs> when this cart's not in just to make it look nice it's not a bad looking system you can get nicer ones but this was pretty cheap this was like 180 um and i moved a few bits on so i thought you know what i'll treat myself to an mvs and uh, yeah, you look for them. You get some ones with some cool, like gloss plastic here, with Neo Geo written, like engraved and stuff like that. And it all lights up if you're really into that. But as it is, it's, it's an okay system. It's nice, and the games are just fantastic. Um, the games on this are the same as on this, I think. Um, the games are slightly bigger sprites on this because it was the arcade. Uh, the sound, of course, on this is um, what's the word is it pcm i'm not sure um it's the chip audio whereas this is cd audio quality um it's a lot smaller system though if you look like this this could go in there that's what i couldn't believe when i got it i was expecting this to be a lot bigger uh, but i thoroughly recommend this system this one is hands down if you're going to get get into neo geo this is the original arcade hardware but the arcade games and the games are pretty reasonable if i'm honest if you're going to get into neo geo go for this skip the aes too expensive Skip the CD, too long loading times, just get the MVS. And get yourself one of these multi carts if you can, if not, the games are pretty cheap. I've got a couple of games anyway, but uh, they're still on the way. So that's the, that system. Let's go to the next one. We have the PSONE, PS1, the Slim, Micro, Mini, whatever you want to call it, you name it. It's the tiny one. This one uh, hasn't had done to it. It's like great as it is. Um, it's, you know, perfect as it is. And also, it's. Uh, has a mod chip. Yeah, so I put a mod chip in there to play backups and different region games. Got a little pocket station on the front there, gathering dust. Um, but yeah, they are incredible picture quality. I think the original PlayStation is great as well. Um, they both have perfect picture quality and I can't recommend them enough, but this one fits on the shelf nicely. I have got a massive PlayStation there, which you could fit in if I moved it all along, but as I said, all, I'm going to say, all these systems are wired in, so excuse any wires you see at the back. I can't really do much about that. Um, yeah, change the LED for a white one as well, just because I thought, you know what, why not? There's a white LED, see? Pocket station saying hello. Great system, love the Mini, and it's great condition, that one. Mini Micro S, I, I never know what to call it. The, the Game Boy, uh, Game Boy, PlayStation O-N-E. There you go, here's one, which it won't focus. This video is going to be awful. <laughs> so, and now we have the Super Nintendo. Now, this is modded with the Super CIC, which is region free. It allows you to play any game from any region in 50 and 60 hertz. It all, it's got 100% compatibility. We'll play with every single game. The only problem is, of course, the slot is the standard Super Nintendo slot. So, what I use is an adapter that goes in the top. Then you can plug the American games into that. 
and then you can play them through that. And it's set, it's got the LED that changes colour, so you've got UK, you've got Japan, and you've got USA. So it'll play everything. Um, it hasn't had a recap, doesn't, didn't really need it, these Super Nintendos, they're pretty good. Got me a uh, 8-bit Doe dongle, I use that on a lot of systems. Um, but yeah, this is the Super CRC. It's the actual board version, it's not like the, the one where someone's made a chip and they've just put wires on it. It's the actual board and it's soldered to it. So yeah, Simon did that as well. Simon Locke's been the guy who's been modding all my systems, so... Yeah, recommend Super Nintendo, of course. Super Nintendo, great system. We have... I'm going to move down. We have the Wii. This is a red one, you can barely make it out because the light's not hitting the front. Um, my white one, which was from the original release date, I just got bored of the colour, so I got a red one and swapped the case over. And I've got a nice red one. Um, this has got custom firmware. It's actually got a mod chip because before people had custom firmware, you had mod chips. And I got the mod chip, which was like, you know, like a couple of months it was released after the system was out. Something stupid like that. And uh, it does work with backups like that, but also, of course, custom firmware will play anything anyway. You can see it a bit better with my hands there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's in okay condition. It's got a few scratches on the top, that's how the case came. Um, but yeah, it's got a hard drive with games on it. You know, what else you want, emulation and stuff like that. Um, yeah, not much else to it apart from the mod chip and custom firmware. So we go down, we've got the, excuse the wires again, nothing I can do about that, they're all from the controllers. Um, you've got the Wii U, um, this is a hard drive, custom firmware, just full of games. Um, some emulation on there, I do like to mix it up. Not much to say about that. We have the, this is a, a quite a rare system, this one. People are like, no, no, it's not rare, the top loader. But this is the uh, PAL top loader. They only release them in Australia. So if you want a basic system that will play PAL NES games in 50 hertz, this one is the one to get. Uh, the PAL top loader from Australia. They're quite expensive. Um, got mine a few years back, but um, yeah, I, I went straight in with a high def mod. Um, high def, it's got, I think it had a, a recap and the high def NES mod board fitted. Uh, and that was it. So it's good to go, yeah, you just turn it on and you get 1080p. Now, this was before any of this stuff, you know, RGB stuff, was working with the OSSC. So the way I did it was high def and played that, and that's all I stuck with because I wanted the best picture, and of course RGB on the normal TV looks terrible, whereas on the CRT it looks great. So, yeah, now I've moved on, and um, yeah, so that system's done. High def, got my full power a set, this will work with it, and it'll play every power a game. Then I've got this system here. Um, this is the Famicom Sharp Twin. Lovely color, I absolutely love this system. This is the recent system I got. Um, got the EverDrive in it at the moment, playing a bit of um, Mr. Gimmick, or Gimmick, because it's known in Japan. Um, yeah, I, I had a recap on this. It's got a full recap. It's had the drive belt changed on the Famicom disc, because it's a disc and um, car all in one. Um, I've had the controllers I've had a controller mod, so this player one has got an actual wire on it, and then it's got, like, as you can see, I've got my NES controller into the dongle. The, the dongle of the NES controller goes into the actual system, so I've got um, an actual jack on it now, which you can just about make up. Look, you see it there. Ah, there you go. So now I can plug that controller into the jack if I want to and use it as a full size controller. Uh, or I can plug the 8-bit do controller in, 8-bit do controller, whatever you want to call it, and sit on the sofa and relax. Um, it's got two buttons. You've got the um, reset and power. Uh, I think that's an activity light for the uh, disk system. Um, it's got two controllers at the back, which are pretty nice. Uh, the right one has the microphone. This system has a full recap. It's had the drive belt change, which I was trying to say before. Um, it's got the RGB board from Tim, Tim Worthington. Uh, it's had an audio fix, and then of course the controller extension, and it's good to go, and it's beautiful. And I mean, I can show you the picture quality on here. It's not gonna do it any justice over the, the camera. Looks incredible. It's not gonna focus for, for Toffee. There we go. But like, it looks incredible. Absolutely beautiful system, and looks crazy good on the TV. That's why I love RGB. With the OSSC, RGB and OSSC, Dream Team, it just looks amazing on everything you run. Now, uh, another system. This is an orange, Spice Orange GameCube. As you can see, I've got a memory card in the front. Uh, got your crappy one here. 
uh, but you've got your aftermarket uh, adapter which allows you to use um, oh, a bit of dust on it actually. Look at that. It's not good, is it? Anyway, so we've got the uh, SD card and we've got the Game Boy Player. And I use this mainly for Game Boy Player. Now with, as you can see, Action Replay, the Action Replay will boot into a thing called Swiss. Swiss will boot on the memory card. Swiss will allow you to play a thing called Game Boy Interface. Instead of the Game Boy Player, it uses Game Boy Interface, which is uh, like a lower latency, um, higher quality, um, like crystal clear Game Boy um, Player. And that's how I run it through SCART cable. And it's just incredible. This case, so the mods on this, um, I've got the Xeno mod chip, um, doesn't really need it. If you've got the Action Replay, you don't really need the Xeno. Uh, you can just get away with the Action Replay to boot into Swiss. I don't really play GameCube games on this. I play it on the Wii um, just because of component. And the component cables for this are very expensive, like a couple of hundred pound and more. So I wouldn't suggest it. Um, this was a purple GameCube which was battered and I give it a new life by getting this shell um, imported from Japan. Got the disc off the top from a friend. Uh, and I thought it matches up quite nice, you know, with the Metroid and... Will it focus? There we go. With the Metroid and the Orange. I think it's quite smart. Nothing else to do with it, really. Game Boy Player's Orange. Uh, I was thinking about getting LEDs in the control ports, but, you know, I just left it. Um, we go down to the last three systems. Um, this is a Japanese skeleton Sega Saturn called This Is Cool. So the This Is Cool edition, they did two see-through ones. This Is Cool and a Derby Stallion. Um, I love this one, and this was a gift from a friend. I uh, can't thank him enough. And, yeah, I just love it. You can see all the workings. It's got a Pico PSU, because obviously um, foreign system, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you need the Pico PSU. It's had, I think it's had a recap on the laser. It's uh, 50, 60 hertz modded region switching with reset buttons. It'll play anything. It's got a region-free BIOS, so it'll play any game from any region. Got a mod chip there, crudely um, taped. Now, the reason it's taped like that, um, you could just make it out. Um, so the old, when I had this system before, I was having nothing but problems with games freezing, and I couldn't work it out. Took the chip out and thought maybe it's the chip. Still did it. Turned out to be the cable, the white cable. Um, the white cable was basically bent so angularly inside that it broke contact. So it was losing contact and the, the laser would just go, nope, and give up. So what I've done is I've, I've put two longer cables in there, let it press against the top just gently and just wrapped a bit of um, captain tape, a thin bit around just to hold it just gently like that, just so, it's, just so it holds, just around there, can you make it out? Just so it holds in place, doesn't wobble around, it's, it's, it's insulated on the bottom as well just so it's gently pressing because I don't want to, you know, th these ribbons are straight as a factory and people bend them and bend them at all different angles and it just breaks them. So I've just, just you know, pushed it down gently. Just leave it. It works. Uh, you know, I'm not going to mess about it. You can bend it if you want, but I just don't want to risk it again and I don't have any spare cables. So for now, staying like that. But yeah, 50, 60 hertz, region free BIOS. It'll play everything. You can chuck it. It, it, it looks incredible. You know, the see-through system is so cool. Um, but yeah, that's the Sega Saturn. Um, excuse the wires as well. The limb ones are not usually poking up. But anyway, I'll try and tuck them down the back the best I can. We've got the Sega Multi Mega, which if you know in America, that's called the CDX. This is a portable CD player, as well as a Mega CD and a Mega Drive all in one. This has had the RGB bypass for the better picture quality. I didn't think it needed the audio fix. Some people might say, yes, get them. But I think the audio is quite nice. I think Sanyo... Uh, chips. It sounds nice. It's, I think it sounds fine. I never noticed any problems. Um, it's got Japan, um, Japan, UK, and USA on the screen. So as you hold the reset button, you can do it on the controller as well, which is pretty cool. And this will change color to tell you what region you're in. And with the EverDrive, instead of getting the uh, the region free BIOS, which you can do, and is a pain in the ass to fit. Get the EverDrive, you can run the file from that, and it does the same job. So we'll play backups as standard. Um, they do anyway, but um, yeah, it will play anything you throw at 50, 60 hertz, the lot. It's had a full recap. Capacitor's all changed. The save battery inside it has been changed as well. So yeah, plenty more saving for years to come, even though it'll probably be dried up, you know, long, you know, <laughs> while I'm dead. Be a while away yet, but it's uh, yeah, it just it will play everything you chuck it. At. All these are with um, retro gaming cables, RGB cables, by the way. These are incredible, really, really good. 
Um, what else is there? That I mean, apart from that, everything's done. They just had a, obviously with all of these laser units when they've been sent away for mods, they've had a refurbish, so they've had um, uh, lubrication things like that. So they're all good to go. But that's that's a great system. It's been modded to the, you know, modded beyond <laughs> modded. It's had everything done. Uh, and last of all, we have the Sega Dreamcast. This has had the um, optical drive emulator installed um obviously i've got a see-through case there which is a see-through black case this case is i think they're from like australia i like the black one we got juice we have got juice so i like the black one because um you can see the leds as well and i've got the leds in the control ports i'm going to start sneezing leds in the control ports and on the power switch uh, power um indicator it's just set to random at the moment, um, and you can have it to any colour you want, and it looks quite nice, I think. Um, fan, fan is standard. It's got a uh, standard PSU as well. I don't. It, they do run a bit hot without the Pico PSU, but you know, it's it's not so hot that it's ridiculous and it still works. So it's fine. So yeah, you put your games on. For now, I've got the laser unit still putting the games on the memory card until I get the games properly, and then I'll swap over to the laser unit. Um, this works with VGA out and with the OSSC in two times it looks incredible um, I don't think it's had a recap it didn't need it it's got the what was it? what's it had done got the LEDs region free that's it uh, region free bias so it will play any game you throw it anyway if you decide to if you decide to uh, add discs into the system it will run any disc from any region I think that's it. Um, I've obviously got my PlayStation 3. I've got my Xbox Original. I've got my PlayStation 4 Pro, Xbox One X. But right, stand up because he's just killing my legs. Ugh. But that's my systems on the shelf. And what I've had done so far. I've probably missed loads out and absolutely messed it up. But I just wanted to show you, you know, what I'm playing and what I'm using at the moment. But yeah, next next thing on the list. Puck Light. All I need is a set of four. So I could put one there, one there, one there. And then these will all have... As I said, soft boxes, and it'll sit in the middle nice. Also, um, not really a mod, but just a little tip. If you've got a Duo R, and you have what I had, which is an eject button, that is very, very stiff. You're really pushing it to eject, right? Take the lid off, pull the button out, get yourself some car wax, uh, Canuba wax, is it Canuba? Is that you say, Canuba? Uh, the high quality stuff, put it on a swab, cotton swab, and then rub it along the rails inside the button, on the edges, on the eject system there. Put it all back together and then you can just go gentle as anything. And it will eject. Whereas before it was a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I've got my wireless controls as well. Not really much to show, but um, there you go. Mega Drive, obviously the SJ6000, Super Nintendo, great control. Got the 8-bit Doe one, uh, which is the 2.4 gig one, and then the NES one, um, until they bring a Saturn one out, and then I'll get that. But yeah, got me all games up the top as well. Some are missing now, because I've started to shift a couple of them that I've got on the MVS. It just seemed to, you know, make sense. If I'm getting, especially these uh, King of Fighters and stuff, if I'm getting the actual cart, bit of a mess up here. If you get like Samurai Showdown, there's no point having Samurai Showdown on that as well. But I mean, some people do like to collect them for everything, but if I can mix it up, it's all right. But if I can have it for the main system that it came out on for, even better. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it was a bit boring and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Whew.